I did a problem about a shot put and it was launched at a 38 degree angle and, and the problem said that's the optimal angle. So let's just see how you would calculate that because as I've said before, if you launch an object from ground level and you ignore air resistance, the maximum distance as it is at an angle of 45 degrees. However, for a shot putter, is that what they're called? I think so. I think so. For the shot put, uh, they're not launched from the ground. They're launched from, you know, like that. So some height h above the ground, then they travel and hit the ground. And 45 degrees is not the optimal angle. So let's find the optimal angle, and it's going to involve a little bit of work. And we're going to do this the algebra-based way. We're not going to take derivatives. This could be a maximum problem, but it's not. Okay, let's just start. So let's just start with our projectile motion problem. In this case, we're starting at a height, initial y value of h, initial x value of 0. So let's just write down our stuff. I have x motion. I have x motion. I know my initial x is 0. My final x, I don't know. Uh, my initial x velocity, I'm going to launch this at some angle uh, theta. So let's just draw that little picture over here. So if I do that, this is my v initial x, v initial, v initial y, and that's the angle theta. And since that's the right triangle, I can say cosine of theta is adjacent v0x divided by v0, and that would mean v0x. The x initial velocity is v0 cosine theta. I'm going to need it anyway, so let's go ahead and write it down. V0 y is V0 sine theta. Now, I don't I don't know theta, okay, so, but that's fine. And I'm going to pick some values for V0 and H, because it does matter, but we'll do that in a little bit. Um, so, I have the final, I'm sorry, I have the, I, okay, the initial velocity is V0 cosine theta. And then uh, I have x as a function of t. The final x is x0 plus v0 cosine theta t. That's my x equation. But I don't know the value of t. I, I could pick a value. Right, that's 0. I, if I launch at some angle at theta and I know the velocity, I could find out where it lands. And, and it could, we could pick whatever angle we want. We're going to get a final position. And that's what we want to do. Now let's go over to the y motion. In the y direction, my initial y is h, my final y is 0 because it lands on the ground. And then my initial y velocity is that. So I only have one important equation. y as a function of time is y0 plus v0 sine theta t minus 1 half g t squared. And let's just go ahead and put in the things that we know because I know that's 0, I know that's h. So other than that, I don't know anything. So I have, I'll put it right here, 0h plus v0 sine theta t minus 1 half g t squared. I can solve that for time. It doesn't look like I can, but let's say I'm starting off with a shot putter. I know h is... Um, Let's say it's 2 meters, and let's say I knew theta. Let's just pick, pretend like I knew theta, and I knew v0. I know everything in there but t. However, it's a quadratic equation. So we have to use the quadratic equation to solve that. So I, I'm going to keep this equation um, and that equation. I'm going to erase everything else. I'm going to erase everything else. Because we're going we're gonna to get messy here. I said I was going to keep that, but I, I deleted it. So let's put that up here. x equals 0, v0, cosine theta, t, and then that equation. And I want to solve this for t. So remember the quadratic equation, a x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Then x is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Yes, you needed to remember 
the quadratic equation, we're actually going to use it. So in this case, a is the thing in front of the squared term, so it's going to be negative one-half g. b is the term in front of, that's a plus, uh, the t term, so it's going to be v0 sine theta, and c is the constant. So I can go over here and say t is equal to negative b, okay? So what's my b? It's v0 sine theta, so I can put negative v0 sine theta. I'm going to say plus or minus. I'm not sure if we should take the plus or the minus, so I'm going to put them both. The square root of b squared, so I have a negative, no, b is just v0 sine theta. So it's going to be v0 squared sine squared theta minus 4 times a, which is g, negative g over 2. So that means it's going to be uh, g over 2, and that's plus. And then I have c, which is just h. And then that's all over 2 times a. And a is negative g over 2, so I get negative g. Okay, so I can simplify this a little bit. Um, I, I can't really do too much here. Really, the only thing I can do is this, right? That's the one thing. So I have 4 over 2. I'm just going to use the power of the chalkboard and write that as 2. Um, I am going to do one other thing. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by a negative sign. And so this becomes minus or plus, which is technically a real thing. Uh, and that's fine. But the thing is, if, if this is a positive number, if that's 9.8, this is going to be positive, 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 positive. So this whole thing is going to give me uh, a positive number. Do I add or subtract? And I'm pretty sure I'm going to add, okay? Because I want this whole time to be a positive number. But now that I have my time, let's take the positive version and let's leave it as a mess like that. It's fine, okay? Then I'm going to put it in up here. X equals uh, V0 cosine theta times time. So that's all of this stuff. And I'm going to leave it as a mess because I don't really care. V0 sine theta plus the square root of V0 squared sine squared theta plus 2GH, all of that over G. So what I've done is to find how far it goes. And I need to know the initial velocity, the initial angle, and the height, and that's it. If the height is zero, starting height is zero, then this come, becomes the range equation, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. Let's just see how we would go about finding the maximum angle. What I want to do is to take some values, I'm going to say v0 is 10 meters per second, I just picked a value. I'm going to say h is 2 meters, and g is 9.8. Now what I want to do is to put in theta equals 0 degrees, and then find the answer to this. And then I want to put in theta equals 1 degree, and, and find how far it went. And then I want to do theta equals 2 degrees. And so what I should see is that as I change the angle, the range changes, the, the distance it goes changes, and I can find out which value of theta gives me the largest range. Now, you could do that with your calculator, but I'm going to do this in Python. And this is a great example. You could do this in Excel or a spreadsheet or anything. I mean, you're just calculating a function. but I want to do it in Python because we can use Python for other things. I'm going to walk you through everything. Uh, Python is a tool. It's a tool to make calculations. It's not, it's not anything to be afraid of. If you haven't done any programming before, it's not a big deal. This is a pretty easy program to write. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the steps. We're going to do it over here on the computer. Let's go over here to that computer. My computer's right there. Let's go right to the computer. Okay, so here we are at the computer. Now, if, if you want to use Python, 
you would need to install Python on your computer. However, you don't because there's some online versions of Python. This is the one I'm going to use. Uh, it's at trinket.io. Uh, you can log in with your Google account and you can write Python programs with something very special. Uh, it's called WebVPython. And WebVPython has some tools in there that make things a lot easier. So I'm going to step you through this. I'll put a link to this code down below uh, so you don't have to worry about it. But I've already logged in, as you can see. That's me. So I click on this, and what I want to do is go to make what's called a new trinket. So I click new trinket, and then it gives me these options. And you can see Python's right there, but I don't want that. And then there's Python 3 with the with a key, Pi game with a key. So uh, some of these things you can write Python 3, but you can't save it without a paid account. But the ones without it, you can. And the one that we want is down here, this web v Python. Okay, so I'm gonna click that. And then it's gonna bring me to this. And it's gonna, there's gonna be two options. I can write Python or blocks. And blocks is a graphical programming language. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's cool. Just don't do it. So we're gonna click over here to Python. And now we're here, okay. So let's just go ahead and, and do something very simple. Don't change that first line up there. But this is in our editor mode. I'm gonna do something like this. Print one plus two, and then I'm gonna run it up here. And you see it output at three, it did it correctly. Okay, so we can do a whole bunch of stuff uh, with WebVPython. Now, what we're actually gonna do is to make a graph. Um, but let's just calculate this. Let's just put this thing in, in here. So we're gonna make some variables here. Uh, G equals 9.8, and you can put um, meters per second squared if you want. So uh, Python wants to use numbers. So if you want to include the units, you have to include it as a comment. So I've put the number sign there. Anything after the number sign is a comment, and Python ignores that. So uh, this is just for me. You don't have to put that in there. I'm going to put H is 2, V0 is 10. Uh, I'm not going to put the, the units in there. And then theta is 0. Okay, and we're going to we'll try something in a little bit too. Now I can go over to my equation here and I can type in everything and calculate my final x value. So let's just do that. Uh, I'm going to put a little space there. x equals, I'm looking right here, I have v0 cosine theta. Now I use lowercase v, so I got to use lowercase v. v0 times cosine. Um, now also, this version of Python wants to use radians, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up here and say, uh, let's call this theta d for degrees, and then theta uh, is just going to be theta d times 1 times pi over 180. So that converted it to radians. So now theta is in radians. Uh, so theta, cosine theta. Cosine is a function built into WebVPython. If you use normal Python, cosine is not there. You've got to import it. Uh, times, I'm going to put a parentheses, v0 sine theta plus, not to plus, plus square root of v0 squared. In Python, squared is star star 2. It's not hat times sine of theta squared plus 2gh plus 2 times g times h. No, h. Okay. And then all of that divided by g. Oh, wait. Let's see. All of... Yeah, that's fine. g. And now we're going to print that. And I get 6.38 meters. That seems like a reasonable thing. Now, and we could do this, just so you know. I could print this in a nicer way. Say x equals x, comma x, comma space meters. And it'll look nice. If you want to look nice, you can make it look nice. So now we can keep changing that angle, that, that angle and see what happens. But instead of just doing it manually, I'm going to make a graph. Okay, because graphs are really cool. Graphs are pretty easy in WebVPython. There's just a few tools you need. And I would not, I don't expect you to know this. Um, I'm just showing you. So the first thing we're going to do is make a graph. 
I'm going to I'm going to say G1 is equal to a graph. I'm going to give it a title. Let's just give it an X. Let's not give it. Let's give it an X title of date of angle in degrees, and then a Y title of uh, range in meters. And this is just text, right? I can type whatever I want there. It's just what it's going to put on the, on the graph. Now, the other thing that's really nice to put the width and the height, I'm going to make it small. Width equals 400 pixels. Height equals 200 pixels because otherwise it just gets too big. Now, that just makes like the axes and stuff like that. The graph is something different. It's called a G-curve. I'm going to give it the name F1 G-curve. And I'm going to give it a color. I always do blue. I don't even know why, but I do blue. Okay. So that G1 is just the name of the graph. Uh, F1 is the name of my curve. Now let's just plot one particular value on here. I'm going to plot one data point on there and say F1.plot. I'm going to give it my horizontal variable, which is going to be equal to theta. And I'm going to give it my vertical variable, which is X. And that would just plot that one data point right there. And you don't even see it because it's just one data point. Now, if I wanted to, I could redo this and plot another point. But what I want to do is to keep increasing the, the value of theta and keep plotting it that way. So let's do that. So what I, I'm going to make a loop here. While theta is less than pi, no, 90, because theta is in degrees. Because I'm going to keep increasing that angle to 90 degrees, right? And at 90 degrees, the range should be zero because I'm going straight up, but we can check that. So in, in Python, loops start with a colon, and then everything that's tab indented is part of that loop. So I'm going to tab right there. You'll notice it's tabbed in. And the first thing I'm going to do is to calculate the position, and that's this whole thing right here. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it right there. And now what I need to do is to plot that value. I'm going to plot a data point in the loop, so I'm going to keep plotting a whole bunch of data points. Now what I need to do is to uh, update theta, theta plus, let's say 0 0.5, 5 degrees. Uh, and now I need to recalculate uh, my value of theta, oh, that's theta d. Let's call it theta d. Oh, and I want to plot this as theta d. Uh, but now I need to recalculate theta. So theta is going to be theta d times pi over 180. And that should work. I don't know. I might have made a mistake. Let's just run it and find out. Huh. Oh, I went to, I went too high. What a, while theta, oh, I want theta d. Ha, huh. that's why. There we go. Okay, so you'll notice that as I increase the launch angle, it gets greater and greater and greater range until I get to right here at 40.2 degrees. So that's going to be my maximum range at 40.2 degrees. Uh, let's just check, right? We know that the height is zero, then I should get a maximum range of 40, at 45 degrees. So let's just check. If I put this at zero... 45 degrees, look at that. Boom, it worked. Okay, and then, so you see that this maximum range angle depends on both the initial starting height and the initial velocity. So if I go back to two and I change this velocity to 20, uh, we'll get a different launch optimal angle of 43, right? So the slower it is, the more it matters uh, for that height. So if I change this to, let's say, five, now I have a, a maximum launch angle of 32. But you see how these things change. And by making this graph and varying that, we can see how the values vary and find out what value is optimal. This is technically a maximum problem, but we didn't use calculus. We just used algebra, and then we just plotted the thing. So there you go. Kind of fun. The end.